This video is sponsored by Capture One. With unmatched color processing, lightning fast performance, and incredible tools for editing and organizing your photos, Capture One offers creatives like you ultimate creative control. Click the link in the description to download a free trial of Capture One and find out for yourself just how powerful it is. And when you're ready to buy, use the code DUNNADIDIT to get 10% off your new annual plan. One of the most important tools that you need to understand to better edit and color grade your photos is the HSL tool. This tool allows you to manipulate the colors in your photo, and the best part is that it's relatively simple. But even if you think you already know the HSL tool, Capture One has a few hidden gems in there that I'm going to teach you in this video, so make sure to stick around to see if there's something you didn't already know. Secure the cup, and let's get into it. So first things first, HSL stands for hue, saturation, and lightness. Hue is basically a fancy way of saying color. So if you're adjusting the hue, you are changing that color. So for example, if we wanted to take something that was blue in the photo and make it more purple, we could adjust the hue to do that. Saturation is the intensity of the color. So if we increase the saturation, we're going to see more of that color. It's going to be more vibrant. If we decrease the saturation, it's going to get more black and white. And lightness is how bright or dark things are in your photo. That one's pretty straightforward. So the magic of the HSL panel in Capture One is that we can adjust hue, saturation, and lightness for specific colors within our photo. To get to this tool, we're going to go down to the color editor in our tools, and then we're gonna to go to the basic tab. If for some reason you don't have that tool visible, you can right click anywhere on your tools, hit add tool, and go find color editor. Inside this tool, we see eight different squares, which for simplicity, I'm gonna call red, orange, yellow, green, teal, blue, blue, purple, and pink. There's also a rainbow one that we're going to talk about in a little bit. These colors are specific selections along the color spectrum, and it's important to know that this is a loop, so if you were to keep going past pink, you'd get back to red again, and it would just keep going and keep going. And that brings us to adjusting the hue. So if we grab green, anything that's green in the photo is going to be adjusted. When we move the hue to the left, it's gonna push it more towards yellow. If we move it more to the right, it's gonna push it more towards teal. So using the hue slider, we can take any of these eight colors and we can shift them closer to their neighbor. One thing that I like to do with my hue sliders to make a photo feel a bit more glued together is to kind of cluster the colors. So I'll take yellow and I'll move it over towards orange a little bit. I'll take red and move it over towards orange a little bit. Then I'll do the same thing with green over towards teal and then blue over towards teal. I'll generally move my purple over towards blue a little bit and then move my pink over towards red. Now we can see a before and after of this photo, this one little move can take the colors of a photo and kind of make them feel a little bit more complementary within all of the colors. Moving on to the saturation slider, it's basically the same. You choose your color and then you can either add or subtract saturation. So selected on orange here, I can either increase the saturation or I can decrease it and notice that it doesn't affect any of the other colors in this spectrum. Similar to the hue shifting trick, one thing that I like to do is desaturate all of the colors except maybe one or a pair of complementary colors to make those stand out. So for example, on this photo, we could go through and pull down the saturation on all the colors except for the ones that we really want to stand out. So like yellow, we'll leave a little bit in and I'll actually increase the orange and a little bit of the red. So we've got before and after, and that really makes that flower stand out in the middle. And the third slider under each color is lightness, and this can be really handy if you've got like a backlit shot where your subject is a little bit dark, especially if they're a color that will stand out against everything else. You can go in, increase the lightness, and it'll just make them pop out a little bit more. Now, as I mentioned on the far right side of all those colors, there's one option that looks a bit like a rainbow or like the whole color spectrum squished into one square. This is basically an all button and it allows us to change all of the colors at once. So if I push the hue slider to the left, we're literally shifting all of the colors over to their neighbor. If I push it to the right, 
it goes the other way. And then we can also increase or decrease the saturation of everything all at the same time. In this case, the lightness slider is grayed out. You can't use that because you've already got an exposure slider somewhere else in the program. So with this, you could actually do my little desaturation trick by pulling down the saturation on all the colors and then just increasing it on the ones that you want to stand out. So if we pull back all of them and then increase the teal and the blue, those little berries will pop out a little bit more. Okay, now you remember how I said that in the HSL tool, the colors were pre-selected for you? Well, they don't actually have to be. In Capture One, if we click this little three dot button over on the right side of the color editor, it's gonna pull up the Edit Color Ranges dialog box. And here you can see the full color spectrum and exactly what each of those different squares mean. Close to the bottom of the dialog box, there's something called view selected color range. And what that allows you to do is it will actually isolate in the photo that you have up whatever slice you're currently selected on. So if I pick my green one, I'm only seeing what it thinks of as green and blue and red and orange and so on and so forth. And then we have the ability to actually adjust those to what we want. So if I choose this green here, I can actually just grab this line and move it. And as I move it in, you'll see that some of the colors are being removed from that selection, or I can add more if I go outwards. Now, all the selections that we have on each of these slices actually overlap a little bit, and there's a slider just below the color wheel called smoothness that chooses how much they overlap. It basically fades each color selection into the one beside it so that you don't get harsh artifacts when you start to affect these different colors in your photo. Generally, I like to keep the smoothness pretty cranked up so that I don't see those harsh artifacts. Now, one other cool thing in Capture One, if I start start really messing with these slices and what I'm choosing, you'll see that it actually reflects down here in the color editor tab. So it'll show me a different color on that tool. And if you messed with it a whole bunch and you want it to go back to where it was, you just click reset to default and hit apply. But let's say maybe you don't want to manually change the color selections, but you're not 100% sure what a specific color is in your photo. Like, is it yellow or is it orange or is it like somewhere in between? There's actually a tool for that right down here in the bottom right corner of the color editor called Direct Color Editor. You can either click the little eyedropper tool or you can just hit D to select that. And then anywhere that you click and drag on your photo, it will affect the right color. So if we click on this area kind between yellow and orange on the color spectrum and we drag to the right, you'll see that the hue is being affected of the yellow and it's got the orange highlighted too. If we drag up and down, we can affect the saturation. And if we hold Option or Alt if you're on a PC and we drag left and right, we can affect the lightness of that color. But this is actually even more awesome than it seems at first. It's not just choosing one of the colors. As you saw there, it was choosing yellow and orange. So if it's somewhere in the middle, it'll actually figure out how much yellow and how much orange, and it'll adjust them accordingly. So for example, if I'm somewhere between the yellow and the orange here, and I want to drag the hue to the right, notice that it went by 15 on the hue scale of yellow, but it only went 7.4 on orange. What that means is that where I clicked on the photo was actually more yellow than orange, and so it decided to affect the yellow more than it did the orange. And there's another button down beside the direct color editor that allows you to change the settings of that tool. So in here, you can choose which direction you have to drag or which shortcut you need to use to do hue, saturation, and lightness. And then you can also change the sensitivity of how much is being affected while you're dragging. And if you don't want to go over here and click this, you can just right click anywhere while you have the direct color editor up and it'll bring up that panel right in front of your mouse. So technically you could do all of your HSL adjustments without ever having your tools up at all. You just hit D to pull up the direct color editor tool and then you can drag around to adjust the saturation of this and the hue of that and the lightness of the other thing and bam, all your colors are different now in your photo. Let's put this all to the test by actually actually doing a quick edit of the colors of a photo. So looking at this photo here, I probably want a little bit more saturation of the greens. I probably want less saturation of the blues, maybe to fix the pink on my nose. So let's see what we can do. If I go to the sky, I hit D, so I've got my direct color editor and I'm gonna drag downwards to decrease the saturation. I'm actually gonna drag it to the left a little bit too to make it a little bit more teal. Then I'm gonna go down to my trees. I'm gonna increase the saturation of those maybe make them a little bit more towards kind of the yellow. 
All right, now I've got a little bit of pink on my nose here. It's probably under the red hue, so I'm actually just gonna move that over a little bit towards the orange, and maybe I'll increase the saturation on orange a little bit. I'm gonna go over to yellow and pull that towards the orange as well. Maybe bring up the lightness on the orange, not quite that much. So there we go. If we take a look at the before and the after, all I did was mess around with the HSL using the direct color editor and then a little bit on the sliders themselves. So as you can see, you can make a huge difference using the HSL tool, AKA the basic color editor inside Capture One. And technically that's really just the beginning. There's also the advanced color editor and the skin tone tool, which we're gonna go over in another video. As always, I wanna hear from you. Are you already using the HSL tool? Do you have any cool tricks that you like to do? Make sure to leave a comment down below and on your way down there, hit that like and subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future videos. Huge thank you to Capture One for sponsoring this video. Make sure to go down to the description and start your free trial so you can mess around with the HSL tool on your own. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.